walk it like I talk it. Walk, walk it like I talk it. Walk it, walk it like I talk it. Ooh, walk it like I talk it. What's good, gang? I hope you're all great and had a wonderful week. I'm so glad you're back here with me on Jade Hope TV. Gang, I got a little bit of something different for you today. I know we normally dive into the Bible stories, but today we're diving into Proverbs. Yes, we're about to pull all the wisdom we can get out of it. So this proverb is Proverbs 31 and a lot of people say, I want a Proverbs 31 woman. Or, I want to be a Proverbs 31 woman. But it's not just about that. There's a lot of other nuggets in there that we're going to explore today. So you know what time it is, gang. Let's get into it. Today, we're going to be reading from Proverbs 31, verse 1, all the way down to 31. And you know how we do it, gang. We're going to read the Bible, break it down. Read the Bible, break it down. First one, let's go. The words of King Lemuel, an oracle that his mother taught him. Drop a pin already. So some people might be thinking, who is King Lemuel? We're going to find out together because King Lemuel could have been King Solomon. Lemuel could have been his pet name given to him by his mum like a nickname. That's what some people say. And in that case, it would have been Bathsheba that gave him that name. The name Lemuel means belonging to God or of God. Others say it's King Hezekiah. And then still others say that it was Solomon writing about two fictional characters just so that we could get like a scenario. So let me know what you guys think. What do you think in the comments? Who do you think it was? Was it King Solomon? Was it King Hezekiah? Or was Solomon writing about fictional characters? Let me know. Let me know what you think. Verse 2. What are you doing, my son? What are you doing, son of my womb? What are you doing, son of my vows? Do not give your strength to women, your ways to those who destroy kings. It is not for kings, O Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine or for rulers to take strong drink. Least they drink and forget what has been decreed and pervert the rights of all the afflicted. Give strong drink to the one who is perishing and wine to those in bitter distress. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Okay, guys. So... We're stopping at verse 7 because there was already a lot in there. So, I don't know who we're going to say it was, but I was going to say our Bathsheba, but let me not do that because I want you guys to come to your own, you know what I'm saying, conclusions. So, let's just say the mother, the mother of King Lemuel, she's talking to him. She's like, son, like, son of my, like, you know, these days you'd be like, son, you're my son. I carried you nine months, you know what I'm saying? saying? That was the vibe. She's basically telling him, listen, don't do this, don't do that. She's giving him wisdom. She's telling him, don't drink strong drink. Don't like, don't get drunk because things that you write, you might forget. The rules that you make for your city, you might forget. Or for your kingdom, you might forget. And what about the people? Let's, let's not basically oppress the people because you make a mistake. And I really like that when she talks about not afflicting the people. It's also interesting how she talks about women. Don't give your strength to women. So your strength is basically... Not to be crude, but ah, how can I say it's not crude? Your semen, you know what I'm saying? It's your strength, it's your vitality, it's, it's, it's for a man. And so she's saying, don't give it to these women who destroy kings, who they like, that's what they do. They set out to destroy kings. And I don't think it means like necessarily like the woman is there like, oh, I'm going to destroy this king. But it's kind of speaking to if you get with the wrong woman, what they can do to you, what they can do to your kingdom, how they can like tear down your life. So I think that's what she's saying to him. It also sounds to me like he's been doing some of these things. And that's why I think it's Solomon, just because I know he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. So I'm thinking that his mother was looking like, what for real? This is what you want to do? This is what you're doing, yeah! You know what I'm saying? Although I know that some of those marriages would have been to make alliances, with other countries and other places just like we do today. But it just sounds like she's low-key displeased at his behaviour, you know? And she's telling don't him... Don't be drinking, don't be wilding out, you know what I'm saying? That's how I see it, but you let me know what you guys think. Verse 8. Open your mouth for the mute, for the rights of all who are destitute. Open your mouth, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. 
Let's drop another pin. I love this woman. She basically telling her son to be a mouthpiece for those that don't have a voice. Telling him to basically be a, a good judge, to be fair, to be balanced, to be righteous. I love it. I, I just, I love it. And I think that she's given good seeds to him. And those are good seeds that we can all live by. Picking up in verse 10. An excellent wife, who can find? She is far more precious than jewel. The heart of her husband trusts in her and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises when it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. His mum is telling him, listen, go for a woman that uses her brain. She's, she's, she takes care of her household. She's a hard worker. Verse 16. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. All right, let's drop another pin. Basically, this one is about her business. That's what she's saying. She's about her business. She gives to the poor. She's not selfish. She takes care of her husband. She works hard. Her lamp doesn't go out, which means she's, she's alert. She's often up working. You know what I'm saying? 21. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Let's drop her pin. So... When she says that her the house is clothed in scarlet, I think that's beautiful because obviously scarlet's like red. It's like red, it's hot. And so I don't think she means that they're dressed in red garments, but they're dressed warmly is what I take that to mean. And also the next verse that says she's in fine linen and purple. Like purple is like royalty. So it's like she's trying to say that She's royal, she's regal the way she carries herself. I think that's really beautiful. So, verse 23. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing and she laughs at the time to come. Okay, she laughs at the time to come. That's really interesting. I think that means that she's prepared. She's prepared for the future, so she's laughing. Because if you're not prepared for the future, you'll be crying. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's what I take that to be. 26. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the gates. So guys, what do you think? Those last few verses were just amazing. Like her children's gonna bless her and her husband's blessing her. He's telling her, yeah, many women are great, but you're that one, you know? That's what he's basically telling her. She's kind, she doesn't deal with in idleness. Her whole household is an idol. She's got strength and she's got dignity. Her children and her husband call her blessed. Her husband's like, yeah, those girls, there, those women, they're all right, but you're, you know what I'm saying? You're A1. So let me know, guys, what do you think about the Proverbs 31 woman? Do you want a Proverbs 31 woman? Do you want to be a Proverbs 31 woman? Let me know what you think about her virtues. But I love you guys, and let's never forget that we're walking the narrow path together. Peace. Walk it, like I'm talking. Walk it, like I'm talking. Walk it, like I'm talking. Walk it, like I'm talking.